We've all been there, playing video games just to disconnect for way too long instead of using our time more intentionally. It wasn't always like this, you probably also used to play World of Warcraft or League of Legends for hours enjoying it without any feeling of guilt. But that was in the past. Now you have goals, ambitions, and you know that if you want to achieve them, you have to use your time differently. Whether you want to be a better engineer or pick up coding to become one, or to bootstrap your own thing, you have to dedicate a substantial amount of time to coding every day. That's exactly the decision I made six years ago by quitting gaming. And even though it was really tough in the beginning, I've used my free time to become a software engineer and to be good at it. Looking back, there are three things that I have followed to quit gaming and to stick with it successfully for such a long time. The first step is deleting all of your games from all of your devices. Here, you're going to feel the loudest opposition from your mind that is going to throw a mock and give you lots of excuses for why not to do it. And you need to categorically ignore all of them. Don't listen to it, Rocky. If you don't and that you will just promise yourself instead that you will code, your mind will not resist and it won't be hard because it will know that it's not real. And you will get back to gaming in a day or two or week tops. So take your phone, get on the computer and delete all of your games. If you played in the browser, then clean all of its history and data. If you have a gaming console, then put it back in its cardboard and place it deep in the closet. Delete everything. That fear, discomfort, and even mental panic that you're going to go through is imperative. That's how you know that you're actually changing your behavior and that you're not once again tricking yourself. And the best part is that this sense of discomfort is going to be short-lived. The only way that I was able to quit without getting back to gaming a few days later was when I deleted everything. And as I was doing that, my mind was going berserk because I was so used to playing video games on the weekends and in the evenings. And now all of a sudden, you have this void in your day and you're not going to disconnect during it and that's scary so you brave through deleting everything now you need to set up your physical environment and digital environment you want to eliminate any friction to start coding so make sure to clean up your desk and get rid of all the clutter and take your phone and put it in a different room then you want to do the same to your digital environment. Close all the extra browser tabs and applications that you're not going to need when you code. And set up the code editor that you want to work with. If you don't have one, I recommend VS Code. Watch a tutorial for how to set it up. There is really not much you need to get started, so don't worry about using all the features VS Code offers from the beginning. My desk and browser would get messy throughout the week. But the first thing that I do when I want to get into a state of focus and get work done is to clean them up and make sure that there is nothing to distract me at the edge of my site. If you have a bookstore like Barnes & Noble or a library nearby, those can also be amazing places that you could have a routine of going to on the weekend or once in a while to eliminate distractions and get work done. And now it's all about doing it. I found implementing consistency through what's called the law of 100, doing something intentionally for 100 days or for 100 times to be really helpful. Being consistent is easier said than done because there's still so many things that can get in the way and distract you. You can end up going through rabbit holes on YouTube, browsing social media, or finding anything else to do other than what you need to, and end up procrastinating, and maybe at the end of the day, you will decide that you're going to work on a small piece of code for 20 minutes. Experts have said that procrastination is an emotional thing, and I have time and time again realized how true this is. By setting a goal for doing something for 100 times, you're making it easier for yourself to be consistent because you have defined what that means and what you need to do. It doesn't mean that you will be on your A game every day, but it helped me to make it much more easy to not worry about all the things that the mind will make us occupied with and beat procrastination and I'm sure it will help you too. So once you've deleted all your games and you've set up your environment, both physical and digital, now you're going to commit to replacing gaming with coding for 100 days straight. Every day, you're going to code for a substantial amount of time, which is subjective, so define that for yourself. But remember, if you were playing video games for four hours a day and you've decided that you're going to code for only two hours, you still cannot game for the remaining two hours. Not while you're under the commitment of 100 days of replacing gaming with coding. You can, as a break, cook, clean, go out for a walk or talk with a friend or a relative, but when you're done, you need to get back to coding.
It's not going to be easy, but that's the point. That's how you know that you're going through a profound change. When I first did this, I had to tell my mind each time that I wanted to distract myself that I'm not going to do anything other than coding. And after 100 days, six years ago, during a single summer, not only have I improved so much technically, it also did not take that much mental effort to sit down and code. And actually doing things that are good for us in general, like eating better and going to sleep and waking up in normal times, became easier to follow. After the 100 days, you can decide for yourself. You can always tune back and allow yourself to play video games in a healthy amount, while giving yourself more than enough time to code and deepen your knowledge. Or as it happened to me, with that momentum, you just keep going and immerse yourself even more. If you can, talk with a friend or a classmate and try to do that together. Try to immerse yourself in a group of like-minded community. Get on Discord and put yourself in a channel where people code or talk about code. You will see that going through this process will actually feel great sooner than you think. You're going to look back and feel empowered that you've done something that felt so hard at the time. And you might get to know awesome people along the way and maybe even realize that you like programming even though it might have felt intimidating in the beginning. When you feel down or have a difficult moment for whatever reason, instead of not doing it, it, what helped me is to write things down, what I feel or what I think, and then still do it. Have a Law of 100 notebook for going from gaming to coding, and write something each day, either the chipping negative thoughts that came up, or the awesome thing that you've learned or something that you want to improve on. At the end of the 100 days, that little notebook will serve as a proof that you can do whatever you want, no matter how hard it feels at the moment. So at this point, you might be all committed, but wondering what to do every day. What's the best way to learn how to code or how to improve at it? After doing it for years, I've got you fully covered. In this video, I'm going to talk about the best way to do that that no one else is talking about.